All right. So a lot of us are jackpying. We're moving on to different countries. And, you know, when you when you go to a new country, you're exposed to different cultures, different ways of doing things. Mm. Um, I have a parent recently who was telling me that, you know, um, her 13-year-old, you know, is talking about having a boyfriend, you know. And in my, in my mind, I felt that it's happening here. We'll just pretend like it's not happening. In your view as a father, a lot, a lot of women have been taught in different ways on how to manage relationships and sex with kids. But in your view as a father, what do you think, when do you think is the best time to start exposing our children to this conversation? Although, or, although I have already started exposing them in the, in the age appropriate ways. But in your view as a father, what do you th how would you even teach the children these um, issues of sex and relationship? First thing is to call a spade a spade. Okay. If you want, to, want your children to go to school, you go to their room, you knock, wake up. Have your bath. It is time to go to school. And they dress up. You have given an instruction, and the instruction should be followed. Mm. That's the normal order. But there are times you need to reinforce some instructions. You need to say it in a certain way to achieve the aim you want to achieve. So in this case, I go to them. I tell them that, look, there is something called sex. Do you know what it what is? Age? Well, maybe from 11, I will be able to confidently say that to my daughter, there is something called sex. At this stage, you start learning about it. The next boy, the boy next door, is thinking about it at this stage. And this is the implication if you participate in it. If you participate in it, at this stage, there is something they call STD, sexually transmitted disease. You could catch it and you could die. Secondly, there is a, something called unwanted pregnancy. You could have that and you could stop all, it could stop all your schooling. It could stop your career, your destiny for the rest of your life. It could pause you get, it. It could pause it. So, listen, so, okay, you know why, yeah. listen, wait, 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 Brown. What? I hear you. As I said, you have a very conservative perspective. Mm. But kids make mistakes. Children, you these, these. Sweetheart. And it's important for us to Sweetheart. say that. Even when, 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 when that thing happens, it's not a stop. It's a pause. Sweetheart. First of all, in anything, you're going to teach anything, anybody, even if you're going to teach a dog a trick. Mm. The first thing is to lay down the rule. There is what they call the rule, the and there are exceptions to the rule. Right. But you cannot start teaching exceptions without first of all laying the rule. Right. So the first rule you give them, yes, it may sound absurd in this age and time, but it is your job as a parent to at least speak it confidently, speak it authoritatively, boldly to your children. Do right. not have sex before marriage. Well, you had sex before marriage. Sweetheart, of course, I did. But you see, I was told not to. And it restrained me for quite a bit. And it always affected me every time I did because I felt I was breaking a rule. You feel you're actually stealing, that you could get caught. But if you never told them, they could be more liberal. They could be more reckless because there is no, no instruction in their mind restraining them. I was told. In fact, my mom was so, was so dramatic about it. She told me that every time you have sex with a woman, that there is a bit of your glory hmm. that is taken away. And it scared me for a long time. And that was why I was never in my life a serial philandra or sexually reckless. I only had sex at times I believed, I truly and sincerely believed that I was going to marry the woman involved. That's why I got, I had very few relationships before my marriage. Very few relationships. And I was heavily emotionally into them because I thought you, they were going to be my partner for life. But unfortunately, they disappointed me. And part of the reason why I couldn't let go was because I'd had sex with them. A bit of my glory, according to my mother, is with them. <laughs> Will I now let them go away with it? So I was actually trying to pursue that glory that let us manage it together and we live together for the rest of our lives. But that was the rule I was given. It right. may be a lie, but my mother did well by giving me that rule because it restrained me. It reduced the number of, of names of women that could have been attached. But do you think that made you fairly inexperienced? All the experience I needed, I got from gist. Mm. I gist all, <laughs> all my friends, a lot of my friends were hardcore womanizers. Are you with me? Till today, we have that conversation every day. There is no, you can't discuss 
serial philandry more than me because I have plenty of friends who do it. We en enjoy this conversation. But you see, if you ask any of them that how was Brown when he was younger, they will say Brown was never a player. He didn't know how to play. But a lot of people did not understand the reason mm -hmm. why it seemed I was unable to play. Okay. I was restrained okay. because of... So it is important. Don't, 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 don't doubt your words. There is life mm. in what you speak to your, child. to your child. Just speak it and leave the rest to God. You'll just be surprised that even though you are not there, but the things you said to them is affecting them. It is restraining them. It is cautioning them. They can't take certain decisions. They don't jump into set, certain things so quickly. So that's the work of the rule. Mm. Are you with me? Well done. But don't you think so? You know, five minutes. Go on. Go on. But don't you think when it comes to, like, for example, now, when it comes to sex, every child goes older, down to my generation, down to younger. When you ask them about sex and their parents, they always say the same thing. What their parents said was, don't have sex before my Some people even go ahead and say that their mother even said, if any man just touch you, you're you pregnant. get pregnant, yeah. Yes. But at the end of the day, what happened? Like, for example, what you said was, it's you tell them about ST, like STD or whether pregnancy. Yes. When they find out that oh, they use a condom, they're not getting all these things. No, that conversation will still come. It will, it will still come. Let me tell you something that happened to me. For a long time, my, when I was growing up, there was only one traveling bag in my house. It belonged to my dad. My dad also told me the same thing, no to premarital sex. But there was this day that my dad looked for the traveling bag. I was the last person who used it. So he sat for it. Eventually, I went to bring it, and I returned it to him. And when he opened, he was trying to put his things in it. He now found a condom in it. And he called me, say, Fair me. Wah, 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 wah. What are you doing with this? And I said, I couldn't answer. And he relaxed. He calmed me down. That I understand it is not a crime that you have found yourself in this situation. But I am glad that you know what a condom is. Please restrain yourself from sex. But if you have to, use the condom. And that was the end of the conversation. I was in the university when I had this conversation with my dad. But I was restrained. Restrain them. Say it to them. Let them know. Let them know the exception. Say it on time. Say it in a dramatic way. Introduce them to what is written in Leviticus. Introduce them quickly. Let them read it. Let them know the gravity of what it is, to, I mean, the, the gravity of having sex. Let them know. It's not left to them, but trust me, the things you say to them, it has a way of affecting them. You, you may not agree, but those people who didn't have, hear anything, whose parents didn't say anything to, they are totally a different ballgame. Those are the ones that just go on a spree because nobody ever told them it was wrong. Nobody ever told them no to premarital sex. They just thought it was part of life. It was like having breakfast and dinner. It was normal for them. Those are different. You wouldn't want your kid to be in that kind of situation. That's it.